this brilliant idea for a way to have more and a very compelling storyline and I, I had to write the story. A way to have more of those aliens from the original. You know, we, at the end of Independence Day, we assume they're all gone. They're all blown up. The first book I read, I'm almost embarrassed to say, was um, Screenwriting for Dummies. And I got it because I, I, I knew enough to know that there's a very specific kind of uh, format that you have to follow if you're going to have your screenwriting taken seriously. I have several students who come into Intruder script writing thinking that the screenplays they've seen online uh, are, you know, that anything goes really, that, that the rules don't matter so much, um, formatting doesn't matter very much, uh, editing doesn't matter very much. They, I have some students who believe that it's the idea that's gold. Vision is great. Um, but if you can't translate that into a document that speaks to, you know, an open readership to get people inspired to build <laughs> your vision, um, then, then all's lost. Stop trying to be Quentin Tarantino. Stop trying to remake Reservoir Dogs. Because um, no one's going to notice that. That's, there, there are a million people want to be Quentin Tarantino. you got to be yourself. you got to find your voice. Look at what you did. You, you took a film, Independence Day, that, that inspired you. You worked on it, you studied it, you tried to expand it or, or, or make it better. One thing I've noticed is that they fall into two traps. They become either too enamored of somebody who could be a mentor, a, a role model, a guide, and they simply replicate that person, the Quinn Tarantino problem. Or they don't study film at all. What filmmakers are your, are your models? What writers are your models? And I find out they really don't watch that many, they don't watch that much film. They don't read that much. Or they watch only one person. They say, I'm watching Quentin Tarantino. I go, well, have you seen John Ford? Have you seen Orson Welles? You know, have you watched Scorsese? Who are you reading? Who are your favorite script? They, I want to be a script writer. Who are the script writers that you really think are fantastic? Can't name any, don't know. Uh, that's a problem too. You got to find that middle line where you've got these people who are your inspirations, but then you got to find a way then to branch off and say, then what am I going to do with that? You need teachers, and then you need to stop being a student in a certain. I use I'm a sketchy outliner um, with no uh, you know formal outline strategy just more like order of ideas, places that characters need to go. I usually have a character first and then I try to put them into motion uh, and I sketch out the bare bones of that and then sit down and learn that character, meet them through the situations that, that have been plotted out already. So it's, it's really, a, my first draft is a writing, it's a uh, process of discovery. I start with journals and um, and I brainstorm my ideas. After I have all of my couch writing done uh, and I feel like I have a really good handle on the direction I want the story arc to go in, um, then I'll sit down finally at a computer. Um, now with this first screenplay, I wrote everything. Um, I wrote not only everything that the heroes, uh, all the protagonists did, but I also wrote out everything that um, the antagonists did. Um, all of the power struggles and machinations of the aliens, I, I wrote it all out. Uh, partly because I was interested, but also because I wanted the timing um, for what we saw them doing to make sense. Now the downside of doing it that way is that I ended up with a very hefty screenplay. I encourage short screenplays so that they can you know, have uh, a portfolio of projects that, that can be produced uh, independently. My, my students, uh, when they're really dedicated, will at least form partnerships or if not like a small group, three people, that carry on their writing relationship for years afterwards. Mm -hmm. Work won't read well for everybody. Um, to be open to that, to be open to notes, to be open to continuing revision, um, but not to cave to it at the same time. You know, I don't want somebody to destroy what they 
what they've developed because one person said that they prefer it to follow a different path. I sent out a copy to Roland, uh, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin, the director and producer who did Independence Day, because I figure if there's anybody in the business who's going to want to make this movie, it will be the people who already own the rights to these characters. In about three weeks, I get my copy back from Roland Emmerich unopened in another envelope with a cover letter saying we don't accept unsolicited material. I have had people say to me kind of things I think were unrealistic, like uh, uh, I, someday I want to run a movie studio. So what's your plan? I, I'm going to enter into and start my own movie studio. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to start my own movie studio. And they don't. I, I said, well, wouldn't you want to work at a movie studio for a while and see what? No, I'm just going to start my own. You know, I'm like, well, maybe not. <laughs> But in the meantime, I had all these other ideas that I wanted to develop. More screenplays that um, I, I was compelled to write. I attended a screenwriting institute at Wittenberg University in Springfield, Ohio. And while I was there, I spoke with one of the um, university professors, Dr. Kent Dixon, and he suggested submitting screenplays to competitions. I had no idea that there were screenwriting competitions. Most of my students feel encouraged most by um, submitting their work to, uh, to screenplay competitions and festivals. Um, and many of those do have a fee for submission, but with that fee comes with, uh, with extensive notes. With inheritance, um, I felt like that was in a place that, uh, that I could submit someplace and maybe get some traction. And so I submitted it to the Austin Film Festival and made it to the second round of the competition. Um, as, a re as a result of being a second rounder, uh, they invited me to come to the uh, film festival and to observe the different discussion panels, and, and I, I learned a lot while I was there. In addition to reading numerous books about screenwriting, I also subscribed to Script Magazine, and I wrote a letter to the editor with this same question, how do you break in? What's the secret to getting somebody to look at your material? And she actually responded to my letter saying, why don't make it into a film yourself? And I thought, that's a brilliant idea. She says, if you post it on YouTube and it gets lots of hits, then production companies and directors and producers will take an interest and they might contact you. Look at Halloween. Mm -hmm. Halloween made something like a 450 450 percent profit or something like that. It was for a long time the most profitable independent film ever made. Really? For a long time was Halloween. They had so little money um, to use the mask for Michael Myers. They went and bought a William Shatner mask and turned it inside out. I went to a conference with Doug Simons um, about how to how to do it all, from writing the script to getting funding, to shooting it, and then how to market it. it. It was very comprehensive. Before I went to that, I thought, you know, I, I should have some idea of what's going on. So just using my iPad and iPhone, I shot basically what's a visual joke, um, just so that I would get a little understanding of what's involved in putting together a story um, visually. Um, and that turned out to, to be very helpful because I could really relate to what Dove was talking about in his presentations. Um, and then after that, I made another uh, short visual joke. Um, uh, and, and my wife then got me a, a really nice camera on eBay. And, um, and I've been trying to learn the skills necessary to turn a script into a film. Um, I was really frustrated by the failure of the Doritos Crash the Super Bowl submissions. And I thought, how come they can't tell an interesting story in these commercials? Um, and it, uh, an idea suddenly hit, and I thought, oh, I can tell that story. So I created a storyboard, and I wrote a, um, a shot list, and I conscripted my children and some of their friends. I composed original music in GarageBand. And I went to a local forest preserve and shot in my living room and cut it all together and quickly discovered part of the challenge of telling 
a uh, story in a Doritos commercial is you only have 30 seconds. My first rough cut was somewhere between a minute and a half and two minutes. <laughs> you gotta let your limitations uh, guide you rather than, than be things that frustrate you or limit you. Uh, what I mean by that limitations not limiting you is recently there's been such a interesting rise of amazing independent low budget horror films. The reason they're able to work is because they understand what they can do with what they have in front of them. On the Evil Dead uh, uh, 2, no, I think Evil Dead 1, he couldn't afford a steady cam, so he took a 2x4, nailed a couple 2x4s together, bungee corded the camera to it, and had people run with it. And critics went crazy for these great shaky shots that were just like, you go, oh, that's all I could do, you know? <laughs> what do you think about Blair Witch Project? Yeah. Uh, where they just set up in a in a uh, uh, state park and just filmed for about a week. They said, we only have this kind of bad cameras, let's make a film where that's part of the film. That becomes part of the premise. I, I don't think there's one single track to, to make it in screenwriting. Most of my students find their success uh, independently where they become the writers and directors of their own uh, works rather than joining a studio. I had a woman who uh, took intro to screenwriting. Um, she had never seen a screenplay in her life on day one. And uh, at the end of 16 weeks, she handed me a perfectly polished feature length screenplay that has gone on to do well in festival. So Paranormal Activity 1, the person who made that was uh, was done. He said, I tried to make it in Hollywood, didn't happen. I'm done. He goes, I got, I got this idea I've always wanted to do. I've got four days. I'm gonna film it in my house. He had $1,000. I think he paid each, he, each actor $500 each. He submitted it to a cable company. And uh, somebody said, this is really good. And it ended up going up the line to Spielberg. And Spielberg went, this is great. Just change the last shot. So they did. And then the studio said, well, buy it, but we want to totally remake it with a, with a big budget. Uh, the guy said, let me do some test screenings and just see what you think. And he began a online campaign that said, he, he, all, the Paranormal Activity website, all it was was shots of people freaking out during the movie, <laughs> during these test screenings. And he said, if you want this movie in your town, sign up. And of course, all these people signed up. And the studio said, boom, release it. Um, and then, of course, in the 1960s, you had the rise of the film schools. And for a long time, that was very centralized. If you wanted to get into Hollywood, you had to go to there. Now, those have started to get spread out, too. So you have other centers of interesting film production, partially because of the changes in technology, where you don't need these huge editing bays. You can, you can have a row of Max. Uh, plus, you can buy these things. You can make those films yourself. I, I see a lot of people who want to jump right to to our features rather than cutting their teeth on shorter films. You're learning the form that way. So like the in the, uh, IFP, Chicago IFP, uh, independent film production, there's uh, screenings of rough cuts of films where you can provide feedback, meet with directors, um, so usually for free or for a nominal fee of $5 to go to these networking events and collaborate events. One of my old students' name is uh, Scott Marcus. Uh, and I noticed something different about Scott right from the bat because uh, my first impulse was to say, okay, what films have you made? Scott's answer was, here they are. Here are all the short films I've made. Uh, short documentaries, short, you know, short fictional films. That gave him an edge, I think, over other students because he had a portfolio to show. He was doing the work already. She understood that he was going to have to work as a PA for a while, as a production assistant, just doing whatever was needed. You know, he keeps on like edging his way into that into that system, into that industry. He gets work, at least in part, because he's known as reliable, he's smart, he can think on his feet, he's easy to work with. When someone's looking at you to hire you, don't be a diva. Tina Fey says that in her book about how you don't have to work with these brilliant, tortured people who are impossible to work with because there are nice people who are just as talented <laughs> if you just look for a while. Scott's roommate for a while had a horrible job, really talented guy, funny guy, but he would come home and he would be 
incredibly, be de incredibly depressed from this grind of this horrible job. So he would do make these hysterical little home videos for himself that he would send to his friends and you know show to Scott. And Scott said, "Put these on YouTube. You got to put these on online. These are hysterical." And those became epic rap battles of history. He made enough money from that web series alone to buy his own home in L.A. Write your passion project. You know, write, uh, break, break some rules. If, you know, if you feel accomplished enough to do so, um, and make your own path. Stop thinking about it like if you don't make it into Hollywood, you're not a filmmaker. Because if you were a poet and your poetry was well received, and you read your poetry out in places, and you had published some poetry in some nice journals, maybe not the very top journals in the world, the most widely read ones, but some good journals. You would still call yourself a poet. But people, unless they make a film in Hollywood, don't call themselves a filmmaker when they are a filmmaker. Thank you.